Hi, this is Sahana. This video is part of the series in which we learn how to build an application using ASP.NET Core MVC and Entity Framework Core. You will find playlist link in the description. You can watch all the related videos. This is our application. We have created this side navigation menu and we are using bootstrap icons. If I click on add employee, we get error because there is no controller to handle this request. In this session, we are going to design add employee and add department forms. Look at this layout file. Here we have add employee. We are using anchor tag and look at this ASP controller attribute. Your value is employee. This means this request will be handled by employee controller and ASP actions value is add. Inside employee controller, there should be add action method to handle this request. If you go to solution explorer, expand controllers, see we don't have controller by name employee. Now we are going to create employee controller. Right click on controllers folder, add, choose controller, choose MVC controller empty, click on add, name it as employee controller, click on add. Now we have employee controller. Here we have index action method. Now we are going to add one more action method that is add. This time we have employee controller and add action method. Let's click on add employee. We are getting different error because there is no view by name add. Click on views folder. See, right click on views folder. We should add new folder by name of controller. Our controller name is employee. So our folder name should be employee. Add new folder. Name it as employee. Now inside this employee folder, there has to be a separate view file for each action method. Click on employee folder. Add view. Razor view empty. Click on add. This is index.cshtml. I'll keep it as it is as we have action method by name index click on add. I will add one more view by name add. Again right click on employee, add, new view, razor view empty. This time I will name it as add. Click on add. Let's run the application again. I will click on add employee. We are not getting error but this is empty. When we click on add employee, we are sending request to the server. When we send request to the server, ASP.NET Core MVC's routing system examines the URL in the incoming request. Here is the URL. Then the routing system's job is to match the URL to a specific route pattern defined in our application's routing configuration. Open program.cs file. Notice at the bottom we have map controller route method and we have defined a pattern. Here Routes are defined using patterns that match URLs to specific controllers and actions. If you notice, we have defined default route. It says if no specific route is matched, then framework will use the home controller with the index action method. URLs in ASP.NET Core MVC application are typically structured with segments that correspond to the controller and action method and additional parameters. In this case, ASP.NET Core MVC application's routing system will choose employee controller and add action method to handle this request. Inside employee controller, we have add action method which returns view. Which view? Add view. See, inside views folder, we have employee folder. Inside employee folder, we have add.cshtml. This is the view that will be returned by add action method. This view has nothing, so we are getting blank screen. Now we are going to design add form here. Let's design add employee form. As you may know, ASP.NET Core MVC view uses razor syntax that allows us to embed C sharp code directly into HTML markup. I will remove this code. I will start by specifying the title. If you notice, we are using this add symbol, then Within the pair of curly braces, we are assigning this title. We use this syntax to enclose a block of c -sharp code within the razor view. This code sets the value of the title in the view data dictionary. This data can then be accessed and used within the HTML markup of the view. I will show you where this will be used. Open layout.cshtml file. If you notice, 
here here we have title tag and we are accessing this view data let's wrap the content inside div tag now i will add bootstrap classes i'm using p4 for padding and container to create fixed width container next i will add heading to this page i'm using h3 tag okay i will save this one and i will run the application i will click on add employee see we have heading here I want to use Bootstrap's grid system to organize and structure the layout of the web page. What I will do, I will add a div and I will use the class row. This will create a row. Again, P4 is for padding and inside this row, I want to create a column. I will add one more div and I will use the class call MD12. So here, call md12 means if it is 12 it will the column will take entire width of the row now i will move this heading element inside this column save again i will add one more div and again i will create a row let's add a column see this time we are this time we are using column d6 this means the column will take only 50 percent of the row width the purpose of this web page is to collect employee details and then send it to the server to create new employee. So we are going to design a form so that we can collect form data and we can send it to the server. Let's use form tag. Let's start adding elements one by one. Here I'm using div tag and we have a label and input for first name. We are using div tag for grouping purpose. We are using different bootstrap classes mb3 for margin bottom by three points. Their form label and form control are form related bootstrap classes. FW bold is to make the text bold. See, we have a label and text box for first name. Let's repeat the same thing for last name. Next, we are going to add date time picker to choose date of birth. See, here we have label uh, which says date of birth. When you want to use date time picker, add input tag, but make sure to use the type as date. Rest bootstrap will take care. See? We have it here. Now we are going to add radio buttons to choose the gender. See, here we have div tag. Inside this we have a label. We have named it as gender. Next we are using div tag with class dflex. This is very important. This class enables flexbox properties for its child elements. This class arranges elements in a row by default with equal spacing between them. This div has two child elements and this arranges these two divs in a row. To add a radio button, we are using this input element, but the type should be radio. Same way, even here we have another radio button and we are using label, one for male and one for female. This way we have designed radio buttons. Now we are going to add elements for email, phone number and address. For email, input type is email. For phone number, input type is number and we are using text area for address now we are going to add drop down list so that we can choose department i'm using label and i'm using select element later i'll show you how to bind data to this element but you have to use select element now i'll add checkbox to mark the employee as active we are using input tag but the type is checkbox the last step is to add submit button we are using button element and you are using class btn btn dark and the type is submit. See, this is our form. We are done with designing add employee form. Next, we are going to design our department form. I'll click on our department. We are getting error because there is no controller to handle this request. Right click on controllers, add, choose controller. Choose MVC controller empty. We are going to add department controller. We have this index action method. I will add one more action method, add. Now, right click on views folder, add new folder. Name it as department. Now we are going to add view. Right click on department, add view choose razor view empty add okay keep it as index.cshtml click on add 
Now I want to add one more view. Again, right click, add, view, reserve view empty, click on add. I will name it as add. Click on add. Open layout file. If you scroll down, see. Here we have specified when you click on add department, department controller and add action method will handle that request. Now we are going to design add view. Let's design this form. See, this form is very simple. This form is similar to the form that, that we have designed for adding employee. Here we go. This is our add new department form. We have to specify department name and click on submit. I'm just done with the designing. If you fill this form and click on submit, new employee will not be added to the database. We have to write logic to handle this form. We are going to learn that in our next session. That's it for today's session. Thanks for your time. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.